Reflex.dev Reflex is a library to build web apps in pure Python. Build web apps in minutes, deploy in a single command. So I basically looked at uh, this uh, library and uh, it actually looks good. I also made some uh, local example. It works very good. It did start, it did require a local Node.js uh, um, server because it's compiling everything from Python to Node. Um, actually to Next.js and to and it has ropers around React. So why do I like this library? I liked when things are simple. I don't like additional abstractions. So if I would look at this and I would say, oh, uh, I don't want to use uh, Python instead of HTML, instead of JavaScript, just give me the, 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 the actual code. But I'm mostly a backend engineer. I'm, you know, all the complexities of setting up now, set up Node.js, set up React, set up pure JavaScript, set up uh, everything. Just I just want to write my web app, right? Get, get out of my way, let me write my web app. And while I don't like the tools, I, I think this one could make sense. Okay, it could make sense if it's simple enough, if it's doing a good job. So we see that it has nine nine uh, k stars. I looked at the API; it looks quite good. First, this website was built with Reflex. Okay, it's just Python. I really like it. So you write everything in Python. Write your entire app in Python, no more switching between languages and frameworks. Use one language for your whole stack. Perfect. If it works good, right? Sick. There are those who would prefer, right? We are not talking now to those who prefer to write in JavaScript and TypeScript. We are talking now to those backend developers who are not proficient in UI but still want to create UI. 60 plus built-in UI components, Reflex come with a large library of UI components ranging from simple buttons to complex graphs and tables. Custom components, create your own components in a few lines of code, simply wrap React component of your choice. Complete customizable, all Reflex components are fully customizable, change the color fonts. Now everyone can walk across the full stack. I love it. With Reflex, every engineer can walk across the full stack, allowing him proficient, productive workflow. Skip the boilerplate. And, okay, you know, this can be marketing, but it's interesting. I mean, they achieved it. I tried it, and it looks good. Reflex comes with a powerful backend built with fast API and SQL Alchemy. SQL Alchemy is the ORM. Built in database ORM, integrate with existing database with a single line of code, or use our built in SQLI database. Batteries included, skip the boilerplate. Okay, let's look at some docs. Right? Let's look at some docs. Let's look at uh, the getting started, the introduction. So we'll go over for this. Uh, I ran this, it worked. Of course it would work, but the question is whether it was easy and I could change it as a backend developer, and yes, the answer was yes. Introduction. Reflex is a full stack framework for building and deploying web apps. Motivation. Reflex was created with the following ways. Pure Python. Use Python for everything. Don't worry about learning new language. Easy to learn. Build and share your first app in minutes. No web dev experience required. Full flexibility. Remain as flexible as traditional web frameworks. Excellent. The fact that they took uh, the flexibility of traditional web works because it's compiling actually to Next.js or something. Reflex is easy to get started but powerful enough for advanced use cases. Okay, this is critical. Because if something gives you like, you know, low code and stuff like this, well, you know, you can do the simple use cases, but once you get to the complex web cases, everything breaks. I think this is not the case here. This is this is good. Build 
anything from small data science apps to large multi-web page websites. This entire site was built and deployed with Reflex. Okay, okay, but still, you know, you know, I didn't build Reflex, so if I built Reflex, it would be easy for me to create this website. This doesn't prove yet anything. Battery is included. No need to reach a bunch of different tools. Excellent. Like Go language, where you don't reach a bunch of different tools, Reflex handles the front and back end deployment of your app. Excellent. Let's go over a simple counter up to explode the basic of Reflex. So you see we have here a counter, we have increment, let's click it. You see, sometimes passes, if it's super critical for you, maybe that no time will pass, because it's going, it looks like it's going to the server and back to the client from this. Then, you know, you might check if there is customization, but I, as a backend developer, building some dummy website, I, I don't care. Also, I'm pretty sure it's possible to optimize this because they said we have full customization and control. This is the basic use case. This is the simplest like use case where we did, we just wrote it. Here's the complete code to create this. Import reflex, so this code is in Python. This, the full, the thing is that the full thing, for, the full code for this is in Python. Here's the complete code to create this. Import. After we look at this, I hope that they will show how to install Reflex and uh, how it's going. Import Reflex SRX. Now they define the state. Sounds good enough, you know, rx.state, class state. I wish they said already here what is exactly the state, what is exactly the SRX, how does it relate to Next.js or to React or whatever. Class state, counter, int, zero. Def increment, increments the counter, def decrement, decrements the counter, and now we have the index, the index page. So here, you see there are the advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantage of building UIs like this is that you can't really double click it, the source code, open it as an HTML page and view it and change it or give a designer to change this. But the huge advantage is that you, as a backend developer, are comfortable with such code. It's, it's simple. I, I mean, I also don't like when I'm not editing my code in the native language. So, so this is translating to HTML to JavaScript. So true, it would be nice to be able to edit in the source code of the HTML JavaScript, but this is simple enough. I, I'm comfort. If this is the price I need to pay in order to full stack build my web app in Python, I will pay this price and I'll be perfectly happy with this. Okay, so now we are building the UI, return rx.hstack, rx.button. So rx is the reflex. <laughs> this is probably horizontal stack. So we're creating the button, the name, the color scheme, the border radius, the on click. So see here, Already in the button, we said that on click, go to actually run the function state.increment. Was, was decrement uh, static? Static method or something? I don't say it's static. Little bit of magic here, probably. rx.heading state.count, so they are showing the actual count in rx.heading. This is the font size. And then rx.button. So we have first, as we saw here, we have the decrement button. First we have a horizontal layout, then decrement button, the counter itself, then the increment button. Again, so we see the same here. Horizontal stack, horizontal. The decrement button with a call to decrement. The heading, the counter, and now the increment button with a call to increment. Super, super nice. And now, just some code to create the actual application, app, rx.app with the state, and add the page of the index, and then app.compile. And we have the above app, the structure of Reflex app. Let's break this counter example down, import. We begin by importing the library, import Reflex as rx, all Reflex functional classes begin with rx, prefix, state. The state defines all the variables called vars in an app that can change as well as the functions 
that change them. Here our state is single var count which holds the current value of the counter we initialize it to zero. Event handlers increment and decrement in the state. Within the state we define functions called event handlers that change the state vars. Event handlers are only the only way we can modify the state in reflex. They can be called in response to user actions such as clicking a button, typing a text box. These actions are called events. Our counter app has two event handlers, increment and decrement. Now the front end, we've seen the front end. This function defines the front end of the app. We use different components such as rx.htag, rx.button, rx.heading to build the front end components, can be nested to create complex layouts, and can be uh, styled using the full power of CSS reflex come with 50 built-in components to help you get started. We actively build components and it's easy to wrap your own React control uh, components, which is mind-blowing and amazing. I mean, if you can wrap <laughs> React components, <sighs> this is good. Components can reference up state vars, the Rx heading component display. The current value of the counter by reference state to count all components that reference will actively be updated. Components interact with state by building event triggers, on click state decrement for event handlers, for example. The on click is an uh, the on click is an uh, event that triggered when the user clicks a component. The first button in binds on click event decrement. Okay, routing. Next we define our app and tell it what state to use. So we add a page here, we add a route from the root URL of the app to the counter components, then compiling. Finally, we compile our app. I wish to set to the compiling to what? Why, why do we need to compile it? I guess this is the compilation to Next.js. And we are ready to run it. Next steps, and that's it. We've created our entire front end, less than 40 lines of code from here. We can continue developing or deploy to the web with a single command. Keep on reading. Okay, so let's just look briefly at the installation of this, because I think this is also optimal to understand what, what's going on to be installed. So prerequisite re re reflex requires the following to get started, Python and Node.js. I guess it's actually running the web app in uh, Node.js, virtual environment, optional. We recommend creating virtual environments for your projects below <laughs> all the crazy tools duplication of uh, Python to create virtual environments. Installing. Reflex is available as a PIP library. Create a project. Installing Reflex also installed the Reflex command line tool. So they have a command line tool. Test that install was successful by creating a new project. Replace my app name with your project name. So we create a directory for our app, then cd to our app, then reflex in it, which will initialize our app with the basic stack skeleton. This initializes template app in your app directory. Run the app. You can now run this app in development mode. Reflex run. And then we can access the application in HTTP localhost 3000. And we, uh, I did changes to the source and it immediately reflected on the UI. Reflex also starts, uh -huh. so they have fast API servers on port 8000. All of your event handlers run on this server. State changes are set to the client with, with ah, it's using WebSockets. Yeah, I get it. So they use WebSockets in order to sends the changes to the client. Okay. You can debug your app by setting the log level flag. But I guess in the future it's going to be interchangeable when HTTP comes, 3 comes in and things like this. This sounds to me like something interchangeable. Fast refresh. Reflex says fast refresh built-in when running the application development mode. You can modify the source code. I see your changes in the browser instantly when you save your code. Let's see briefly on the project star structure. Directory structure, okay, so they created the project, now they have this hello.web, what is this dot web assets, hello, here we have the Python, rsconfig. What is the dot web? 
the reflex frontend compiles down to the Next.js app. The output is stored. Okay, so if we look at the dot web directory, we'll see the output of the Next.js app. You will never need to touch this directory, but it can be useful for debugging. Each reflex page will comply to corresponding JS file in the web pages directory. The asset directory is where you can store a static assets. Okay, main project, config. So in the config, yeah, they have some configuration for DBOL. Whether it's dev, reflex uses ban. Don't notice to manage JavaScript libraries. Ban is installed automatically when you run reflex in it. The environment can be set to rx.env.dev or rx.env.pod. See self-hosting. Let's briefly look at the self-hosting section. This is the first thing. Uh -huh. So reflex container service requirements, Docker example, Docker build, uh, create some Docker. Deploy is here. Okay, so reflex deploy, basically, okay. We get some token from where? Deploy coming soon. Okay, so reflex make it easy. We get some token maybe from reflex and pay them a little bit amount, but only if we want to store it on their site, I guess they will have a free tier. Yeah, it will build an app in reflex.app. So I guess if you want to get your domain, you will need to pay, but otherwise it would be just fine. Okay, so this was the introduction to the reflex, interesting uh, reflex uh, library. Let's look a little bit maybe also on the components. Graphs, graphs would be, navigation would be interesting. Graphing. Let's look at charts. Okay, so they have here some interesting charts. Yeah, this looks good. They have here the lines. This could be actually very nice to do charting from Python, because if you provide here the array, nice. Then you can plot some charts. <laughs> okay, so this was Reflex.